Ketchikan has been nicknamed the first city, being the first port of entry into southeast Alaska for folks sailing up from the lower 48. The whole area is a hub of sportsman activities, all with an easy access. Expert guide Mark Burgoyne introduces two novice anglers to this wilderness playground, an endless world of unspoiled beauty where rugged mountains march into crystal clear waterways. The abundance of wildlife in this glacier carved country is second to none, and its waters are teeming with an unsurpassed variety of seafood. And situated right in the middle of this sportsman's heaven, 15 minutes outside of Ketchikan, you'll find George Inlet Lodge, which boasts first-class accommodations and access to world-class salmon, trout, and halibut fishing. Here at George Inlet Lodge, we fish out of skiffs, and people are generally on their own or have a guide along with them to uh, show them the ropes in the different areas. And having the experience a guide brings along can't help but make the fishing better. Also found under the pristine waters of this mountain flanked area is one of the world's most popular table delicacies. One activity that I really enjoy, especially for people that are new to this area, is crabbing. Of course, to set the crab pots we had to find bait first and uh, it's funny to watch the people's reaction when uh, we catch a, a nice good looking bottom fish which routinely you might eat. Uh, uh, for me to say, no, no, we're not going to keep that. We're going to use it as bait and trade it for some crab. Now, what are we going to fish for here, Mark? We've got to get our crab bait, you know. And, uh, so I thought you brought the crab bait. <laughs> no, 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 no. We, we have got, to catch we're, our we're own saving, crab bait. We're saving money again, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Didn't we pay for that in the package? <laughs> no. Okay, we'll we'll just is... drop them down to the bottom and uh, crank it up about two turns and uh, just start jigging away and hopefully we'll get something. Okay. <laughs> we'll just go down naked with these. Uh, just drop it down to the bottom. This is the spot for the guaranteed oh, crab bait. Yeah, there's snitch right down here. Guaranteed oh, okay. crab bait right guaranteed. here. No, no, no guarantees. No. We might have to move to another spot. <laughs> okay, I got one on. Neat. <clears throat> Take five crab minutes to pull it up, I think. Oh, look at this. Oh, neat. What is that? Is that a flounder? It's a little flounder, yeah. Yeah, that's good crab bait. All right. Well, let's eat him. We took the big fish that I would have taken home and used for dinner, and we put them in a crab pot. I got something on here. Ooh, it's huge. <laughs> Look. <laughs> you guys are really doing good. You know, at this rate, we're going to take uh, probably three hours just to get enough bait to fill those pots. <laughs> okay, I got one, too. Well, hurry up now. I want to get some crab. What do you got this time? Oh, ah. rock cod. Good. Hey, look at those spines. I think that's enough. Let's go get some crab now, okay? All right. Okay. Dungeness crab are most often found in shallows, making them easier to catch than their deep water cousin, the king crab. Okay, let's, let's throw them in. Go ahead, put that front one in first, right over the side. Okay. Yep. It must be fairly deep here. Yeah, it's about 65, 70 deep, deep, deep here. All right, now just okay. lower it over. Lower it over, yeah. Hey. Okay. Well, okay, let's try. Now, how long do we have to wait till there's crab in there? Oh, uh, at least two hours. Okay, let's go catch some halibut now. Okay. okay. While we're waiting for the crab pots, then we usually uh, go after halibut. And uh, hopefully we can find something in the, the immediate vicinity. And uh, halibut fishing is a, an experience uh, all of its own because, again, you, you may be fishing for halibut, but you can end up with uh, small salmon sharks or rock cod or red snapper or any number of other things. Yeah, I'm going to catch another one. How deep do you think it is here? Uh, I think 22 fathoms, 24 fathoms. Okay, you're on the bottom? Uh, yeah, I'm on the bottom. Okay, what do now, I do now? Okay, two turns up. One, two. Okay. Maybe, maybe three. Maybe three? Three, yeah. Okay, now, just the same way that we were uh, 
uh, jigging for bait for the crab pots. Okay. Uh, I think we do the same routine here. Okay, I'm hitting the bottom. Okay. Now I'm going to catch you a hundred pound halibut. <laughs> no guarantees. <laughs> I'm so hungry. Everybody I wants right now. <laughs> wants to be assured that they're going to catch something. And then what do I do? Up then, fast? Then pull it, pull it up. Fast or slow? Oh, it doesn't matter on the up. The down. And then fast. down fast. And I like to try to introduce them to the the world of bottom fishing. Uh, uh, which is something that is unexpected quite often by people when they come up here. I think I got something on. I'm sure you got something. Yeah. We're doing a little bit. Well, it's not moving very much. These guys are really deep. Good exercise for you guys. Yeah. Oh, there he is. What is it? A half a fish? Wow! <laughs> you mean? Oh, oh, oh. I hope maybe I get the other hand. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, do you think a shark bit that on? It something did. I don't oh, know. Oh wow! That's what kind of fish. Where, where what that? kind of fish was that? <laughs> that that's amazing. <laughs> well, do you feel it bite the middle? In there. Oh, there are bite marks. Look at that right there. Sometimes there just aren't enough fish to go around. Beneath these seemingly tranquil waters, your catch can become easy prey for a free-loading creature of the deep. All right. That's kind of scary, actually. <laughs> Let's go swimming. <laughs> it may be a stroke of bad luck, but we may run into where we have one individual will do nothing but catch sharks. Okay, something just hit mine. That's pretty big. Yeah, but let me, uh, let me yeah, wind, wind your line in here. Wind yeah, I'll get it. Think I could yeah. possibly have the bottom? No, no I don't. No, Look no, at no. it. Look at that pull. He's sure that he has a halibut on because they, they come up like a lead weight and they do struggle quite a bit. But then all of a sudden this ugly old shark breaks the surface. Just when we thought it was safe to go back in the water. Yeah. Dun, dun, Look at this. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Look at this eye. Want me to pull him off? Yeah. How are you going to get them off? Yep. Watch those spikes. See that spike on the tail? Uh, oh, yeah, I see it right there. Yeah. Is this, uh, like a claw. This is really um, hard. Look at that. It's really hard. Animals, aren't now, are these his ears? These <laughs> holes? No, the gills. Or they, they don't right actually there. have a gill like a fish. They have to be moving all the time to stay alive. Yeah, there's the bottom. One, two, three. One, okay. two, three. <laughs> and a little extra. Don't have to be very smart here. Keep cranking. When you're fishing at a depth of 120 feet, in spite of the water's clarity, it's too dark to identify the catch. And when you can, it may surprise you. Oh! You got a big one there. Oh! <laughs> it's running you got a fish? Line. Yeah, yeah. Get your line in, Chris. Is that look like how? Right. When the battle starts, removal of all other fishing lines is imperative, or you may end up with a tangled rat's nest and a frustrated end to the contest. Shall I get the gaff ready? No, let's wait and see what it is. I'm going to be embarrassed if it's another shark. <laughs> oh, he's our shark killer. <laughs> Looks like a halibut. I don't see it yet. What are the What are the other possibilities? What else might pull like this? <laughs> I think that's, I think it is a hell of it. I don't think there's much else down there. A big snapper gives you a little bit of a di uh, battle, but. Uh, yeah. Uh, is it pulling right now? Look at that. Wow. What's what that? is, what what's, is it, Mark? It's a sea bass. What's Just, hanging out of his mouth? That's his stomach. He pulled him right off the bottom. My wow. God. He's got the bends. Here, bring it in. Can you eat that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I good bet that's too. good eating, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah they're good it's eating. Really Look at that. This me a pretty color. Look at that color. Oh, three, four pounds. Hand me a big one. I want to catch a great big fish. I want a whole fish. You want a whole herring? A whole herring. We don't I'm going for get big. whole herring. I want a whole herring. I'm sorry. <laughs> I want a... you, you can have a chunk. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> That's a whole That'll catch a big fish. Oh, That'll catch a big fish. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll see. Next time, I want a whole one. Ah, I think I got one on. Okay. Set it. Set the hook. Wait a minute. I, mean, I can just go like that, right? Yeah. Okay. Got it? Okay. Wind away. Oh, this is a big one. Gosh, at first, the, the guide kept saying, it must be the bottom. I like to tease them quite often about, uh, oh, they've just hooked the bottom. You don't really have a fish. <laughs> I think you got the bottom. And I just kept reeling it in, and we're making bets as to what it was. And I bet it's a halibut, and I bet it's a big one. Huh? Is that pulling? It's is pulling. It the... Look at it. Huh? Look at it pulling uh, down. Huh? 
It's a bit of a, uh, the ride. Okay, it looks like a halibut. Halibut cheeks tonight. <laughs> oh. And I kept reeling this fish in, and then it would pull on my line. It kept pulling out, and then I'd reel it in. Well, I know it's not a log because it wiggled. You better have a halibut after this. <laughs> Do you think it's going to break? No, no, just make sure your drag isn't set too tight. This is a lot of work. The guide kept saying, ah, oh, you've got the bottom or a rock or a log, and, and I knew that I had something big on that line. If you get tired, I'll take it. Oh, no, it's mine, it's mine. <laughs> I pulled and pulled and pulled, and then and this thing was come up, and it was so big. Now, a big halibut, you just can't throw in the boat because they can break your leg. This is a neat part of the fishing. <laughs> your handle's turning a little bit there. And I pulled some more, and and it was a halibut. It was a 30-pound halibut. Oh, 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 hold it. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Whoa. OK, Chris, Chris, what? drop the tip of your rod. Yeah. Drop your tip. Release, release your drag a little bit. That's about a 30-pounder. The fish will come to the surface and the person won't really know what, what, he, what he or she has until it gets to the surface. But then with a halibut, what'll happen, it'll turn right around and go right back down to the bottom if he has a chance. And now they're fishing. Whoa, that was Release too much. your drag. Get Release it. Away. Release it a little bit. Okay, let me get the gaff. Okay. Get some of this stuff ready. Oh, I don't have to get tired. Oh. That's about 30 pounds, huh? I gotta watch. Yeah, He's getting out. He's this. getting away as fast as I'm I'm winding. Okay, now when you get him to the surface, okay, now. Oh, there he is. Okay, there he is. Okay, down, 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 let him down. Okay, now bring him up slowly, because I have to be able to reach him, okay? Look at him. He's big. Get him? Yeah. Halibut are the powerhouse fighters of the flatfish family. When embroiled in a bout, a halibut can swamp a boat, strip gear, and even make a fisherman almost wish he had left this monster of the sea alone. All right, Boy, look that's, how big that's he is. huge. How, how much does that weigh? Oh, that's 30 pounds easily. Whoa. Okay, got him? Oh, wow, take my picture. <laughs> <laughs> He's really gorgeous. Now, have you ever heard the story about the guy that pulled in 30, 40 pound halibut? He slipped and fell, huh. and the halibut started flapping, and uh, it fractured his skull and killed him. Ooh. So, you know, it's really quite dangerous. And they're strong. It's all muscle. That's all muscle. Now, here's where the experience of a guide is really helpful. Get that rope through his mouth and gills. The guide had said that we had to hog tie the thing, and I didn't know what that meant. And he was explaining that you have to tie the mouth and the tail together like a package so that the, um, the halibut couldn't, uh, couldn't get anywhere, it couldn't flop around to hurt people. Okay, now he's ready to go to market. He's yeah. got a handle and everything. He's going to my table. <laughs> <laughs> I've never caught a fish that big in my entire life. Halibut fishing is an exciting sport, which many people aren't aware of, and we try to introduce them to that here at George Inlet. Okay, guys, let's haul them up. We're starting to drift pretty fast, and Hank, Hank is waiting for us back at the lodge. We should get back, okay? Okay, we had a great day. Good. It was Good. fantastic. Especially that 30-pound halibut. <laughs> that was the bottom. <laughs> I'll share that with you tonight. <laughs> it's real exciting to watch the excitement that uh, people feel and express uh, when they pull a crab pot and see that their efforts are really producing something, uh, uh, a pot full of just wiggling crabs. Did you get it? Okay. I'll tell for you. Okay. Right Notice in the it. bottom, right there. Yeah, Notice right there. that uh... we pulled and pulled and pulled and pulled and pulled, and it was really, really heavy. And um, I was surprised that uh, we pulled up about um, 15 crab. <laughs> Look at that. Oh. All right, we eat tonight. Boy, there's not much bait left. Look at that. Oh. The guide said that we could only keep uh, the ones that were males because the females. Um, have to go back in the water so they can produce some more some more crab. Here's a female, yeah. Well, she can have more babies. She can also well, grow up. Came and, that's a keeper hanging on the corner right there. By this guy? Hand. Yeah. The males we could keep if the uh, size was sufficient. And the size was from spine to spine on the back had to be six and a half inches or more. This is too small. 
Yeah. Of the three kinds of crab found in Alaskan waters, the Dungeness is the most readily caught. This hard-shelled seafood will run about three pounds. Are, are the males bigger than the females? Uh, some kind of shell. Look at him try to go after my thumb. Look at that. This is the male then. You have to watch those claws. Their vice-like pinchers can draw blood. So you keep the males and you throw the females back so they can keep no, that's making nice. babies, everybody, huh? Everybody under six and a half inches will throw back. Well, how, uh, how, how big do you think that is? That's, what? that's this over is seven inches. Yeah. yeah, that's over seven inches, I'm sure. What are you Amazing doing sense. to those crabs? <laughs> <laughs> They seem kind crab of docile. Yeah. yeah, crab wars. Fatigue never felt so good. It's an exhilarating feeling bringing in a boatload of crab and halibut and enough tall tails to last a lifetime. Okay, you guys ready to eat some of this oh, crab now? Boy. Oh, boy. Yeah, look at this. Huh? Huh? Yeah, uh, this is a good great, one, huh? isn't it? Yeah. How do you eat crab? Look at these pinches. I caught on fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you caught on fast. What's your technique here, Mark? Okay, just crack it with your teeth. Yeah, you did it. Oh, look at this. Mmm. Mm. And you just boil this in the... Seawater. Yeah. How, how long do you boil it? I just bring it back to a rolling Nothing oil. tantalizes even the most sophisticated taste buds like fresh caught crab. That kind of crab, Dungeness crab, is probably my favorite food in the whole world. I'd rather have that than anything. And to, to uh, have them fresh was a real, real treat. See, now it's having hunk of meat right here. Look at that. Mmm, it was really worth it. Huh? All that pulling uh, of that crab pot. Good trade for bait, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's really hard to describe. Uh, adequately, you know, the enjoyment and the excitement and the thrills that people have. The thrills, I guess, thrills are something that people are, are experiencing there that they've never, never experienced before. And uh, doing something that they've never done before. Uh, seeing something that they've never seen before. And uh, a total experience that some people, you know, will remember forever and ever. The halibut and crab caught today are just a bonus, an added extra to the marvel of this beautiful land. Clean, cold waters, green, untrampled forests, tidewater beaches teeming with unseen life. This is the real experience of Southeast Alaska. Now here's the real seat of the problem, making sure your hook knows which halibut to catch. Where'd it go? Uh, Once that issue is solved, you can get down to the business of fishing in the most popular and heavily fished river in Alaska, the Kenai. This river is known the world over for its king salmon run, but it also offers some of the best sockeye salmon catches anywhere. When hooked, sockeye are very visible dancing across the turquoise green river in a spectacular display of showmanship. Their movements are graceful, but anglers beware. One potent dash can make an angler's knuckles smart for days. The sockeye are powerful, swift fighters, equal pound for pound to any other Pacific salmon. Now it's a matter of wits. The sportsman plays the fish towards the net. The fish pulls the line to the limit. The contest could go either way. Essential to landing that lunker is the net action, and this is definitely not the way to do it. Uh oh. Now it's the fisherman's turn to put on a graceful display. Well, somebody had to win. 
But if it hadn't been a knockout, we're sure the judges would have gone for the fish. Nice Isn't that pretty? Right fresh out of the ocean. And that's dinner.